Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. So today we're going to have a look at analog. The Raspi Arduino has six analog channels. It has a 10-bit analog to digital converter on it, which means that it can break down an analog input voltage into 1024 steps. That's 2 to the power of 10. And that outputs values from 0 to 1023. Now since the input voltage is 3.3 volts, it can basically measure any voltage up to 3.3 volts and it will output a value 0 to 1023. If you connect 0 volts to one of the analog pins, it will output 0. If you connect 3.3 volts to one of the analog pins, it will output 1023. If you connect 1.65 volts to one of the analog pins, it will output 512. So you see, you can measure any voltage between 0 and 3.3 volts in 1024 steps. That's called the resolution. Why is this useful? It's useful because most analog sensors output a voltage and that voltage is proportional to something, be it temperature or pressure or weight or whatever it is you're measuring. In our case, we're measuring light using a light dependent resistor. I haven't gone into very much detail, but I really recommend you have a look at the user guide. I think the analog section starts around page 38 and there's a much better explanation of it there if you want to go into all the gory details. We're going to be using our light sensor and we're going to use our 10K resistor to read it. I'll show you a bit more about that now. So now we're measuring the resistance of the light dependent resistor. Using my multimeter it's showing about 3.3 kilo ohms. So let's put a pen lid over it to block out most of the light. And now it's showing 310, 311 kilo ohms. If I put my hand over it further to block out even more light from the video lights, you can see it goes up to almost half a mega ohm. Okay, so now let's take the lid off and shine a torch on it and see if it goes down even more but with a torch on it. It's going down to about just less than 2 kilo ohms. It's a bit variable because I keep moving the torch. We can't read this directly, but we can read it using a 10K resistor. I'll show you how. So here's how we measure the voltage. Basically, we attach a 10K resistor in series with the light dependent resistor and we measure the voltage across that resistor. Now that gives us a really good way of being able to read the light dependent resistor. So let me just show you. Under normal light it's showing 2.4 volts. If we put a pen lid over it, it goes right down to 0.1. We can probably make that go even further if I shield that from the video lights. Yep, goes almost right down to zero. And then if we take that off again, it should go back up. Then if we shine a torch on it, it should go up even more almost. The maximum it would go would be to 3.3, but I haven't got a bright enough torch for that at the moment. Basically, we're going to replicate that circuit on Arduino using these two components. Everything else, the power supply is built in, and we have an analog to digital converter on the AppMega chip. So let's wire up our circuit. The light sensor will connect 3V3 to A0. So that will go something like this. Okay. And the 10K resistor will connect A0 to ground. The best way to wire that up is to wrap it around this leg of the LDR. So let's do that. So if you wrap that around two or three times, and then make sure that end isn't sticking out. Okay, now that goes in A0, and the other end of the resistor goes in. 
ground and the other end of the light sensor goes in 3v3 okay make sure those are not touching otherwise that will cause a short which you don't want okay so now we're good we're also going to use an LED and 330 ohm resistor and we're going to use those to join port 5 to ground via the LED so let's put the resistor on the long leg of the LED and connect the resistor to port 5 and the short leg of the LED goes to ground so that's ground and that goes to port 5 always making sure that none of these legs are touching each other okay I think we're good now so this is what it looks like from the other side you've got port 5 a resistor an LED and the short leg of the LED is going to ground you've got one leg of the LDR going to 3v3 the other leg going to analog 0 and then you've got a 10k resistor joining analog 0 back to ground. So now let's load up the software. So here's the Arduino IDE. Let's load up our sketch. So we want to go file sketchbook LDR LED. And then we'll see our sketch here. Okay, let's do a quick code walkthrough of the LDR LED sketch. So the first four lines are comments just telling you what the program is doing. The next three lines we are setting up three integer variables. One for the analog pin we're going to use to read the sensor. One for the LED pin which we're going to actually use as a PWM pin. And one to determine the brightness of the LED. So the next three lines is the setup function and all we're really doing in that is setting up our pin 5 as an output. Pin 5 was set here originally. Then we start our main loop and the first line here we are reading the analog pin and that would be analog 0 because we set ADC pin equal to 0 up here. So then we read that pin and we have a 20 millisecond delay and we're not going to do anything with that reading, we're just going to chuck it away. The reason we're doing this is it sometimes gives you a more accurate reading if you actually read it, chuck it away and then read it again after a short delay. So in the next line we're setting up a new integer variable to store our analog reading and then, and then we're reading the analog pin again and putting the value into the variable that we just set up, then we're going to have another 20 millisecond delay. The reason for the delay is it avoids us trying to read the analog to digital converter too frequently. If we try to read it too often, it doesn't work very well. So if we have a short delay between reads, it works much, much better. So in the next line, we are effectively inverting our reading from the analog to digital converter because we want when the reading is high we want the output of the LED to be low so we've got to reverse it and we do that by subtracting the whatever value we get from the maximum possible which is 1023. In the following line we're using the map function. What that does is it will enable us to effectively translate our reading from a 10-bit value, which is 0 to 1023, to an 8-bit value, which would be 0 to 255. And the reason we need to do that is that we're going to write that new value as a PWM value. And if you remember from the previous video, our PWM values are only 8-bit, so they can be 0 to 255. So 100% would be 255, and 0% would be 0. So in order to translate a 10-bit value to an 8-bit value, we can use this map function. So all we're doing is effectively converting that to a 0 to 255 value in this highlighted line here. And then 
we're going to take that converted value and write that as a PWM value to the LED pin. So the upshot of that is when the voltage that's read from the LDR is high, the output to the LED will be low. So when it's bright, the LED is dim. And the opposite way around, when it's dark, the LED will be bright. That's why we had to invert the value at this point here. So that shows you how the sketch works. And now let's upload the sketch with File, Upload Using Programmer. Compiling the sketch now. Uploading. And we're done. What this sketch does is it reads the LDR and gives it a percentage value of light and according to how light or how dark it is, if it's dark the LED will be very bright, if it's light the LED will be very dim. So let's see if we can make that work in a way that you'll be able to see. If I put a pen lid over the LDR this LED should get brighter. It's not instant, it's almost instant because there's a short delay in the script. If I shine the torch on it, the LED should get dimmer. Yes, that works fine. So that's one way that you can indicate the output of the LDR. Another way is to use exactly the same circuit, but we can actually use the serial port on the Pi. If you notice, we have got the RX and TX jumpers on already. These connect the serial pins on the Raspberry Pi to the serial pins on the AppMega and that means that the Pi and the AppMega can talk to each other. So what we're going to do in the next sketch is we're going to have the AppMega report its values and show them on the screen of the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to use two methods to show that. One of them uses a program called Minicom, which is really useful, and the other way is going to be using a Python script. OK, so let's upload the next sketch. File, sketchbook, LDR, LED, serial. Let's do a code walkthrough. The first few lines are identical to the previous sketch, so we needn't go over those. In fact, the first change is this line here in the setup loop. We are using the serial port, so we need to initialize the serial port, and we're initializing it at a speed of 9600 board, which is a speed that works really well on both devices. So then we start our main loop, and the first new bit is here in line 20, where we are defining a new variable to store our ADC reading because we need to do some work on it a little bit later on. So then in a couple of lines later, here we're calculating the voltage and putting it in a float variable because we're going to need to use it for decimal operations. And you do that by multiplying the analog to digital converter reading by the maximum voltage and then dividing it by the number of steps on the ADC. So it's an 8-bit, so there's 1024 of them, so the maximum possible reading is 1023. And the result of that equation gives us the voltage, which we stuff in the variable voltage. The rest of it's identical except the last few lines here, where you see all these serial prints. So what we're doing here is we are actually outputting data to the serial port. So here we are outputting a tag so that we can identify the data at the other end. Here we are outputting the ADC pin number and then a space. Then we're printing the voltage to three decimal places. Then we are printing a space and V and space. Then we are printing, you have to specify everything you see, even the spaces. Then we're printing another space. ADC colon and another space, and then we are finally printing the ADC value itself, but 
notice that we've added ln. What that does is it prints a line break at the end of whatever else that you print. Sometimes a Python program or other programs, when they're reading the serial port, if, you, if there's no line break, they keep reading forever, thinking that the output hasn't finished. If, if you don't print any line breaks, it can go on forever and it can hang your Python program. And then at the end, we've got a one second delay, which stops us from overloading the serial port. If you stuff data too frequently to the serial port, what can happen is that it can crash your Python program as well. So that's basically it. In a nutshell, let's upload it and see how it works. File, upload using programmer, it's compiling, and it's uploading. It does pretty much the same, except it reports the output of the analog to digital converter back to the serial port of the Raspberry Pi and I'm now going to show you how to interpret that. You'll see this part still works exactly the same because it's unchanged. And now I'll show you how to install and use Minicom. And after that I'll show you how to read it using the Python script. So in the LDR LED serial sketch that we've just uploaded that is now currently sending data to the serial port of the Raspberry Pi. But we can't yet read it because we haven't told the Raspberry Pi to look for it. So what we need to do now is quickly install something called Minicom. So we will first check that our Raspberry Pi package lists are up to date with sudo apt-get update. That's now done, so now we need to sudo apt get install minicom. Minicom is the program that we will use and say yes. Minicom is a program that we will use to see what's happening on the Raspberry Pi's serial port. It takes a minute or two, but now we're done. So the Duino is connected and it's already throwing data out to the serial port. So if we type minicom dash b 9600 dash o dash uppercase d forward slash dev tty capital A M A zero, that should show us what's happening on the serial port. And as you can see, data's being thrown out of it about once a second, which is exactly what should be happening. So to get out of Minicom, you want to press Control A, and then Z, and then X. And yes, we'll leave Minicom. That's one way of accessing the serial data being pushed out by the Duino the other way is to run this Python script here, which if you installed using my auto install script should be in your home Pi folder. All we do to run that is type Python Duino and then hit tab and it should auto complete. Running this should give us the output as well. But instead of one line, then another, then another. It's overwriting each line with the newest one. So that pretty much concludes what we set out to achieve, which was to show you how to use the analog ports on the Raspberry Arduino. If you want to have a look in slightly more depth at the Python script that's running at the moment, that's on page 45 of the user guide. And it's not very long, it's only about 35 lines but it's useful to be able to know how to uh, read the serial ports using Python, as well as how to write to the serial ports using your Raspberry Arduino. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you've learned an awful lot. I'm planning to take this further because there's an awful lot more that you can do with Arduino, and there's lots more fun to be had. So although all the basics are now finished, and I consider my obligations to the Kickstarter to be completely and thoroughly fulfilled. 
uh, I am enjoying this and I will take it further and there will be more so stay tuned for that and to quit out of that you just control C you might have to do it a couple of times this was Alex Eames for raspi.tv thank you for watching